today I'd like to talk to you about using a personal testimony. If you'd turn with me to Acts chapter 5 and verse 42, it says this. It says, And every day in the temple and from house to house, they kept right on teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. I want you to notice that the early disciples at the early church every day met in the temple and they preached and they taught Jesus Christ. And I want you to notice verse 42 here says, Every day in the temple and from house to house, they kept right on teaching, right on preaching Jesus as the Christ. You know, many people feel it's unnatural or or uncomfortable with a house-to-house or door-to-door type approach. And uh, I would like to just share a few things that we've learned in uh, actually going out and uh, seeing the doors open for discipleship training, discipleship lessons, seeing people converted, turning to Jesus Christ. It's not near as hard as as what we've been told. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed was the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul used a personal testimony three times in the New Testament in talking to an unconverted person. You find Paul's testimony in Acts chapter 9 in Acts chapter 22, and in Acts chapter 26, Paul gives his personal testimony, his experience, what happened to him as he's talking to unconverted people. And I found that that's one of the best approaches that we have found in in bringing the message of Jesus Christ to other people. We do what we call prayer walking. It's actually when we are go, go to a door, we knock on a door, and we tell people we're, we're just in the area praying for people. We believe that God hears and God answers prayer. And we just wondered if you're having any problems in your family, any health problems, any kind of problem. And uh, would you like for us to pray for you? Sometimes people would say, well, yes, I have a problem and that they'd like for us to pray for them. But a lot of times they they might feel a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit embarrassed. They might say, no, we don't have any, any uh, prayer request at this time. And then we just begin to tell them our personal testimony at the door. You know, I told them, I noticed you, you have children here. I have three children of my own, and I have two 16-year-old daughters and a boy that's 20 years old. I've been married 22 years. And uh, on December 14th, 1981, uh, my second child was stillborn. And uh, they said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. And I said, don't be sorry. Let me tell you what really happened. And I began to tell the story how that our first child was born perfectly normal in every way. We, we, uh, my wife wanted to have a home birth. We had a midwife that worked at a high risk maternity center in El Paso, Texas. And, uh, anyway, when our second child was born, she was coming Frank Breach and the midwife was able to do some procedures and actually she was born feet first. But when she was born, she was stillborn. You know what that means? She was dead. And she was just as dark as my jeans are or my clothes today, my pants. She she was blue from uh, a lack of oxygen. Oxygen had been cut off in the somewhere in the birth process, and she was stillborn. That midwife picked her up, slapped her, hit her as hard as she could, uh, did procedures on her, suctioned her lungs, thinking that fluid had filled her lungs up and, and other procedures she did and finally gave up. You know, I was just like any other father. I just lost my daughter. What am I going to do? And I would like to ask you, I don't know if you've ever read the Bible or not. Have you ever read much of the Bible? I asked people at the door and about that time I said, well, you know, I've read a little bit or sometimes they said, no, not really. And the reason I'm asking this to you today at the door is because to tell you the rest of the story, uh, the Bible says this in Acts 10, 38, that Jesus went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I said, you know, I'm just going to tell you this story and, and, and just you can take it or leave it for whatever it means to you. But my little child was dead and I was thinking in a few days that we would bury her. And then all of a sudden, you know, I thought, I just want to hold her. And as, I, and as I went to pick her up and hold her, there was an evil presence over her. The Bible calls it a demonic spirit. And it physically attacked me, paralyzed me momentarily. And immediately when that happened, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you unclean spirit to get off this baby. And I command life into this child in Jesus' name. 
And do you know what happened? The little baby that had never breathed went, just like that. She took one breath. She ceased to breathe. And so I said it again. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you unclean spirit, I command you off of this child right now in Jesus' name. And the second time, the little baby, <gasps> she breathed and she continued to breathe. Jack, Sally, John, who is whoever I'm talking to at the door, you know, after a period of about three minutes, a person without oxygen to the brain has brain damage. Did you know that my daughter is perfectly normal in every way? We named her Vita in Latin. That means life because we wanted to tell the story what God did for her. God brought life back into her. And you know, Jack, from that time on, I've studied the Bible a lot. And this is what I've discovered. I discovered there is a kingdom of darkness. There, Like that unclean spirit over that child, there is a kingdom of darkness and a dominion of, of Satan in his rule. And there is a kingdom of God's dear son. And do you know what? When Jesus Christ came to the earth, he began to call people out of that kingdom of darkness into his own kingdom through repentance, through them turning to him, to follow him, to turn to him, and also for the forgiveness of their sins. And Jack, I don't know where you're at in all of that tonight, but I'm just telling you what happened in my life and in my family. And, and Jack, I want to tell you the real reason that we're at your door tonight. You know, Jesus told us to go make disciples. And I realize a lot of people are busy and can't go to church or don't want to go to church. And, and if you've got questions, you can't raise your hand and say, Pastor, what does this mean or that mean that you just said or, or your priest or whatever? I realize that. And so this is what we are really coming to your door for. In just 10 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes, we're given concentrated teaching from God's Word on a cassette tape or a video. Just, ten, just think about it, 10 to 15 minutes on a video or a cassette tape. And we'd like to just play that to you. We'll supply an outline. And then we'd like to go to the Scriptures and just ask you some questions to make sure you understand. It's, it's really a dialogue. It's back and forth. We're not preaching at you. We're not trying to tell you what the Bible says. We're trying to help you discover what the Bible is saying uh, through just asking a few questions and letting you listen to this 10-minute video cassette. Would that interest you, Jack? Would you be interested in something like that? We'll set some time up at your convenience. We'll come to your home and just talk to you about that, give you this lesson. And I want to say this, Jack. If you don't get something out of this first lesson, this very first lesson, if it, if it doesn't help you, if you're not encouraged, if it doesn't build you up, you'll never see our face anymore because we're not here to bug you. We're not here to come and knock on your door. We're not here to, to get you to join a church, an organization, or anything like that. We're only here to tell you what Jesus Christ did for us personally in our lives and to help you come to understand the Word of God for yourself there's a lot of things in the Bible, Jack, we don't know and we don't understand completely. But we are here today to offer you uh, a study, a few questions, just in 10 minutes on a video or cassette uh, at your own convenience, right, in your own home. Would you be interested in that? And did you know a lot of people say, yes, I would be interested in that. And we set up a time to go into their home at that time. And we begin these discipleship lessons. We're not there to do what I call microwave evangelism, twist their arm, get them to say a prayer real quick where they don't understand even what they're doing. We're coming with these discipleship lessons to put an understanding on them. Christ and him crucified. We give them an understanding. I, had, I was telling one pastor here in town about our discipleship lessons. And he said to me, Don, what, what happens after the first lesson? After the first lesson, a person understands what they need to do to respond to Jesus Christ and to receive the mercy and pardon that he offers. We are not there to twist their arm and make them do something like a high-pressure salesman. That is not our approach. But we're through the first lesson, they'll come to an understanding of what they need to do from the heart. The pastor here in town asked me, well, Don, what happens after lesson 15? I said, after lesson 15, if that person will have stayed with us, they will have known what it is 
to have repented of their sins. They will have been water baptized and they will have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And we're seeing that kind of thing happen, not after lesson 15, but even after lesson six. So our approach is to, uh, in Matthew 28, Jesus said, go into the nations and make disciples. And then in the process of making disciples, baptizing them. He said, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the midst of discipling, bringing in understanding of Jesus Christ and Him crucified to the unbeliever. We're talking about reaching the unbeliever. When we bring that understanding week after week, this is what we're doing. We're building a relationship with them. We're building friendship with them. They come to love us and trust us. And we're bringing God's word to them. We're not to come in there to preach at them. We're reading the scriptures. We're getting them to read the scriptures. We're asking them questions where the, those questions come alive to them and they see the answers from God's word for themselves. It's not something that we're putting a high pressure thing upon them. And after week, after week, after week, we see people come to a place where they're willing then to openly profess Christ because they know what it means to accept Christ, to follow Christ, to be committed to Him. It's much different than our uh, many of the evangelism approaches today. So what I'm saying here in this first part of this training session is this. The way that we go out to reach the lost is, first of all, by a personal testimony, and each of us have a personal testimony. Many times we, we have created our own tracks. I wrote this uh, track, The Death of My Daughter, and I leave that at the door many times for a person. Other people on our team, on our evangelism discipleship team, like uh, Joe Rose here, a slave is set free. He was bound by alcohol. He was bound by drugs. We have Rocky Forey, the death of a dope fiend. He was bound by dope since he was 15 years old. Jesus Christ set him free. So we tell these testimonies at the door. Sometimes somebody says, but I don't have a dynamic testimony like that. I didn't see my little girl raised from the dead after being dead for a period of eight minutes. I realize a lot of people don't have those kind of testimonies. You might have a testimony like Andrew Womack, that the power of God to sustain a man in his life all through his childhood to keep him out of all of the sin and the filth and the ungodliness that most people get into. That's the power of God. Each one of us have a testimony. And I've had people say, well, I don't have a dynamic testimony like that. Each one has a dynamic testimony. And if you don't feel yours is dynamic enough, let me say, use my testimony. When we first went out in our evangelism discipleship teams and started reaching out to people, uh, Joe Rose, he used my testimony. And after a while, he got where he could, he could give my testimony better than I could give it. I'd just say, Hey, Joe, go ahead and tell him what happened to me, you know? And he'd just take off telling, uh, the testimony. The apostle Paul used his personal testimony three times in the New Testament in reaching the lost. You can do it too. Today, we have all of these computers. We have the computer programs. We have, you know, Word Perfect on your computer or whatever kind of a program you have on your computer, Microsoft and all these other things. And it's very easy to set up your own track of your own personal testimony on your, on your computer. And it's very easy to, to, you know, it's a lot more effective to say, I didn't get this down in some Bible bookstore. This is not something that I bought. This is what happened to me. And I want to share it with you. And so on our first part, of our discipleship training, I would like to, for you to do this. You may have a trainer with you today, or you may not have a trainer with you today. You may just be listening to this video. You may be by yourself. You may be with some other people. But in the first part of the training, this is what I'd like for you to do, okay? And, and let me say this while I'm thinking about it. In all of the, the rest of the training sessions, please get a pad of paper and a pencil or a pen and begin to take notes and the things that I'm telling you we're going to supply notes for you, but it's always better to take your own personal notes and then add them to the notes that we will be supplying you. So in the additional training sessions, please bring your pencil and paper with you and, and begin to take notes. The thing that I'd like to ask you to do now is this. I would like you, we're going to, we're going to cut off this video or this cassette in just a few moments. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to Set down and begin to write out your personal testimony. 
Write out what happened to you. Write out how you came to Jesus Christ. And then I would like for you to give your personal testimony to your trainer. If your trainer is there today, I would like for you to give your personal testimony to your trainer, just like you were presenting it at the door. Now, your trainer will give you some additional tips on things of, of how to approach people at the door. Now, you may not be with a trainer today. You may just be with some people there. You may just be uh, watching this cassette or videotape. If that's the case, then tell your personal testimony to the other person after you've written it out, just as if you were uh, presenting it at the door. Now, what I'd like for you to do, we have supplied this additional information that I've written. It's called Tips on Sharing Your Faith. Tips on Sharing Your Faith. And we are supplying this to you along with this uh, video training in this first session. So right now, I'd like for you to to when we shut this uh, uh, video down here in just a few minutes to write your personal testimony to also begin to present that to your trainer or to some friend and along with that okay please listen to me now along with that read this article tips to share in your faith i want you to study this uh, before you go on to the next training session you need to study this material tips on sharing your faith and also write your personal testimony and present that either to someone there or to the trainer there that is helping you today. So God bless you as we continue our training uh, to bring the work of the ministry out to where it's needed to the people of the nations. God bless you.